Today we're going to look at how you can build a website and run it for zero. The first thing we need to talk about is the AWS environment. Um, when you open a new AWS account, you get the AWS free tier, right? So let's look at the AWS free tier. What does free tier do? Well, it gives you 12 months of services for free. And there are some products that are always free. And there are some short term trial offers that are available. So what do we get for free? Um, well, first thing we'll need to for to host our website is going to be Amazon S3, right? We get five gigabytes of Amazon S3 per month. Now five gigabytes per month, that is sufficient to run a pretty big website, or <laughs> maybe several websites. I know that my websites run as at about seven megabytes in size, and we'll see uh, my website and as an example, and we'll do some estimations of uh, how much it would cost after the free tier expires. Uh, but let's first see what solutions we have, right? We could also run an EC2 instance for 752 hours. So either a, a what do we have, a T2 micro or a T3 micro instance. Uh, so that's a full operating system that you could run 24-7. Uh, 750 hours a month is way, way more sufficient than 24-7. But again, if you choose one instance, the high availability is not going to be very much, you know, um, it's it's one instance. It's on one hypervisor. It's in one data center somewhere. Uh, so what we're going to do today is we're going to take a look at how to make sure you've got a highly resilient, highly durable, very, very highly available website. So that's why we're going to try to host as much as possible off of S3. Uh, S3 gives us, uh, S3 gives us essentially, um, very, very highly available storage. So it's 99.99% uh, uh, SLA means this is like 50 minutes per year of downtime, right? Five minutes a month maximum. Actually, no, it's it's five minutes per year. So 99.99% is actually less than a less than two minutes of downtime per month that you can expect from S3. Um, if you want to run a database, you got RDS. Again, it's going to be a single database for 750 hours right? And it's not going to be very big. We're going to focus on the storage. And then what we're going to use is also uh, CloudFront, right? So if we just search for CloudFront, CloudFront is our caching service. We get 50 gigabytes of data transfer, right? So we can basically transfer the five gigabytes in that S3 bucket 10 times a month for free, right? We get 2 million HTTP or HTTPS requests, right? 2 mil million requests for free at no cost. So that is something that you have to utilize inside of this environment, right? Um, yeah, it's 12 months free. We're going to see how uh, that makes sense. Now, the DNS services, you got to run DNS somewhere, right? So if you're registering your domain, uh, you're probably getting DNS services with it. In this example, I'm going to use Route 53, the DNS service, right? There is no Route 53 uh, that's available for free. Route 53 is an amazing service. It uh, is designed for 100% SLA, 100% SLA. Yeah, your domain will never be down, right? That's why that's what AWS guarantees uh, with Route 53. And with Route 53, um, you essentially have a lot of flexibility. A domain that you run will cost you 50 cents as long as you're below 5 million requests per month. So if you're doing 2 million requests on your cloud front, then of course, uh, you're covered, right? You're covered basically in that 50 cents. You can do double that and you're still running at 50 cents. And then it's just a fraction of a dollar per um, every million requests. So very cheap, right? Um, okay, then you say, but I don't just have static content. I want to include some dynamic content. All right, for dynamic content, what you can do is you can do Lambda, right? All right, with Lambda function, 
this one is always free, right? You get a free million requests per, per month. You get up to 3.2 uh, million seconds of compute time per month for free. So as long as you're in that 1 million requests per month range, that is pretty decent. Now let's think about it. What does 1 million requests per month mean? Well, um, you got daily visitors. Let's count that by daily visitors. Um, you got 10,000 daily visitors, right? You got uh, 30 days of traffic. That's 300,000 daily visitors. 300,000 monthly visitors. 300,000 requests. Uh, let's say that everybody, you know, clicks two, three times on your website. That's a million requests. That's 10,000 users that are using your website. With 10,000 users, if you're just using AdSense, uh, 10,000 daily users, unique daily users, is going to be delivering you $20 a day in profit, right? If you're just putting AdSense on it, if you're just putting any kind of ad platform on your website and you have 10,000 visitors a day, you're more than covering the free tier plus, you know, a little bit extra here uh, that you have to potentially pay. But we're going to try and build it within the free tier. So what do we need uh, for the free tier? Well, first thing that we need is the uh, storage, right? So we're going to host our, our uh, website on S3, right? And we're just going to open up uh, our account and we're going to go to S3. And in S3, what we're going to do is we're going to create a new bucket, right? So I'm going to just create a new bucket. I'm going to call this bucket demo bucket Atria, right? I'm going to host it wherever I want. I can choose any region to host this bucket. Now, what you should look at is a location that will essentially be close to your users. Now, let's say I'm in Canada. I want to be, uh, I want to have my users in Canada. I'm going to go to the Canada region. If you're in India, uh, the Mumbai region. If you're in uh, Singapore, you know, Singapore. If you're in uh, anywhere in the EU, you got a lot of choices, right? You got options, Frankfurt, Ireland, London, Paris, Stockholm, South America, Sao Paulo, US, you have got four regions in the US, two on the East Coast, two on the West Coast. All right, so so there are a lot of choices. Um, let's just do Canada, right? We'll uh, select that. We'll store the bucket in Canada. Um, I like to give it tags. Why do I like to give it tags? Well, because it's a best practice. Um, it helps you understand why this bucket was created, right? And of course, what kind of, what kind of actions um, um, this, this bucket is used for, right? So I'm going to say purpose demo, right? I'm going to add another, uh, client atria, right? I'm going to add another date is 2020, uh, 06, And I'm going to say another owner is Marco, right? Why do I add these tags? Well, because it costs me nothing again, right? It gives me the ability to find this bucket. It fits it into purpose demo, which is our standard approach across our account for any buckets that are created. Um, these allow us to essentially uh, make sure that, uh, you know, that nobody um, uh, uh, leaves any demo stuff lying around for a long time. Uh, I could enable versioning. Enable, enabling versioning is really cool. Uh, so just by clicking this, you enable versioning and that gives you the ability to store several versions of your documents. Let's say um, you want to have a history of all your website files. Um, you click this, right? You've got your index HTML and then you update it and you upload index HTML again on the bucket itself. You'll see two versions of your index HTML, right? And of course, uh, you could do server access logging if you're very interested in what's happening. Now, server access logging is going to cost you extra. So we're trying to do this for zero dollars. So we're going to be uh, uh, trying to do it on the cheap. Then we've got object object level logging. Again, this would um, trail, this would create a cloud trail um, 
uh, uh, of uh, object access at an additional cost. So we're not going to do that. Uh, automatic encryption. If you were required to have encryption at rest, you can click on automatic encryption and then choose whether you want to do built-in server-side encryption or you want to use uh, KMS managed server-side encryption. Uh, so KMS is the key management service. It lets you create encryption keys for your platforms. Um, it is great when you use KMS because what you can do is you have sort of two levels of access that you where you control encryption. One is going to be your um, one is going to be your uh, S3 bucket where you actually control who's accessing it, and the other is going to be a uh, uh, the other key is going to be uh, with the um, uh, the the other piece of access will be to the KMS service. So if you want to give access, you need to have access to both, right? To the KMS and the service. Um, object lock, we're not going to use that. You would use that if you had a, a bucket where you were uh, performing some kind of compliance or something like that. You could lock the objects. Um, and when you lock the objects, uh, they cannot be modified, right? So it's a write once, read many times model. Uh, it's great for any kind of compliance, any kind of regulations that you need to adhere to. And of course, what you can also do is uh, add an additional cost. You got metrics for the bucket. Now we're going to make this bucket into a, a website. So we're going to host our content straight off the bucket, our index HTML, our CSS, any kind of static content, JavaScripts, uh, we'll just drop them into our bucket and say, voila, that's it, right? All right, uh, next, uh, we're going to configure options. Now, by default, all buckets are blocked from the public. <sighs> that's not good, right? Because I can't make a, a website and host it on the web uh, if I block all public access. So what I want to do is I want to remove uh, the feature that will allow me to uh, unblock public access. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to click unblock public access. I'm going to click I acknowledge. And I'm going to say I want to block everything through access control lists, right? and I want to block uh, any cross account access, but I do want to have public access uh, through a new public bucket policy, right? So that I can create that policy. And once I've created that policy, then I'm going to lock it down again. Uh, but for now, because I just want to show you how the public website works, I'm going to, I'm going to set up that policy for you. All right. Um, then we, uh, look at the permissions. What kind of permissions do we want? Well, um, first thing we check that this one's on the any, uh, sorry, the um, this one's off here with the uh, new uh, bucket policy. Right. And uh, of course, nobody else is going to have uh, permissions. So I'm just going to go and create that bucket. All right. So where's our bucket? Uh-oh. All right, I need to sign in again, just a second. Yeah, it's my connection not being stable here. Sorry about that. All right. All right, signed in again. There we go. Now let's go to that demo bucket and let's bring up, bring out those features that I was talking about. All right, so now this bucket's empty. Uh, what I need is some kind of uh, index HTML file, right? Um, so uh, we're just gonna do a simple index HTML right? We're going to do a, a um, just print out hello world, right? So um, body hello world. And then we're going to close that. There we go. That's all we need, right? And I'm going to save this as 
Um, I'm going to make a new folder here. Demo. I just call it uh, index.html. index HTML all right that's all we need right uh, very very simple file I'm gonna upload that file add this file from demo where did I make that demo in desktop demo and there it is upload that file all right um, I'm gonna uh, just store it onto my S3 standard tier, and that is it. Upload up uh, that index file. All right, now we've got our index file. Now we need to make sure our bucket is made accessible uh, from the outside, right? So what we need to do is we need to make a policy um, a bucket policy. All right, let's just get this policy. All right, so we just need to have the name of the bucket in here. So this is the name of my bucket. And I'm gonna go through this policy once I paste it into the bucket itself. Okay, permissions. And now I'm gonna set up the bucket policy. And I'm just gonna make this bucket public, right? That's, that's the first thing that I'm gonna do. All right, so what does this policy do? Um, let me increase that. There we go. A little bit, a little bit bigger, so that you can actually see. So we got a statement. It says uh, it's got a identifier, public read get object. That's just my identifier to sort of know what it does. Effect is allow. Principle is star. Action is get object, and then resource is our demo bucket, right? This is the name of this bucket. So. It says the ARN for this bucket is is this, and I have this exact ARN in here. All right, so pretty, pretty self-explanatory here. I'm gonna save this, right? Uh, and now it's gonna say, oh, this bucket's public, right? You have public act, you provided public access to this bucket. We highly recommend you never grant any kind of public access to your S3 bucket. Yes, I know, uh, but for now, we're gonna leave it public because we just wanna see if it works, right? Uh, now, of course, website, right? Um, website, uh, static website hosting, right? So we're gonna say use this bucket for static website hosting. I'm gonna say index HTML as my index document. Don't forget to add index.html in here, even though it has some text pre-written, it won't work if you don't do that. And this is my endpoint. So I'm just gonna copy this endpoint. If I go to this endpoint right now, uh, it'll say nothing, right? So what I wanna do is I wanna just say save, right? And now that I have static website hosting, if I turn this on, um, it will tell me uh, forbidden right now. And let's see. Now what I need to do is uh, go back to my bucket itself, right? To overview. And I'm gonna make this index document. I'm gonna say make public. Well, uh, something else is blocking me. So I'm just gonna remove this one. Uh, we're just gonna remove this one completely. Confirm to just make sure nothing is blocking us here. All right, overview. 
And I'm just going to have to make this uh, index HTML public. There we go. Make public. Boom. Now I got the permissions. Now we should get a proper response. And the proper response is hello world. Right? That's my bucket. Now, making your bucket public is no fun. And what about this thing here? Not secure. Mm. Right? That's no good. So this is an HTTP bucket. If I go to HTTP um, S, I do have a HTTPS uh, uh, option on S3, but it doesn't work for static websites, right? So how am I gonna make a secure bucket um, on, on AWS? Well, what I need to do now is I need to make sure that this bucket is hosted via as you can see, HTTPS, no good, right? Doesn't work. Uh, there's no option for HTTPS with, st with uh, static websites. What I'm gonna do now is I'm gonna actually go and use CloudFront to host this bucket, right? And what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna secure it with CloudFront to make sure that it only goes to S3 and then I'm going to actually put some more security features on top with a Lambda function that's going to return the server responses that we need to make this website secure. All right. So our content is now okay. Let's say we just keep it public for now. Of course, we'll take that permission away. We'll make sure that it's not public. We'll make sure that it's as uh, smooth as possible. Um, that is as secure as possible and we'll, we'll make sure that that process is as smooth as possible. All right, so let's go to CloudFront. Okay. So what I need to do now at CloudFront is I need to actually make sure that that bucket is reachable through CloudFront, right? Now, one thing about uh, CloudFront distributions is um, you'll see, all right, um, it's just a, a content delivery service, right? It caches your environment information. And um, it says here, you store files in an origin, an S3 bucket or a web server. So you could put an S3 bucket to web server uh, and uh, it can speed up distribution of static content by caching it plus any kind of dynamic content that is actually um, uh, going to be storable. So for example, any kind of responses from dynamic content or you can actually terminate your dynamic content connections at CloudFront. And then if it's going across the globe, it's gonna be faster on the AWS backbone than over the internet. All right. So I'm going to make an origin name. Um, I'm going to select the bucket and we call that bucket. Uh, uh, where is that bucket? A demo bucket. There we go. Right. Origin path. We're just going to leave the path straight onto the bucket because we're already um, we're already making sure that it's a secure uh, restrict bucket access. Yes, I want to restrict bucket access. Um, I'm going to create a new identity, right? And this uh, access identity will be spe specifically for this bucket. Now, what does that mean when I restrict access to an identity? Well, I can give CloudFront a specific identity. It's like a secret key. It's like a password that CloudFront will use um, to uh, talk to my bucket and have permissions from my bucket delivered directly, right? So it's designed essentially to um, ensure uh, that your bucket is accessed securely. And when I say create a new identity, you can have an existing identity accessing multiple buckets, or you can just create a new identity um, so that you have a unique identity that, that connects to that bucket. So you have um, real like perfect security for that, right? Um, you can say um, grant read permission and say, uh, okay, Yes, update the bucket policy. That means that the service will up to automatically update that bucket policy. So that's the bucket policy that um, I used. So let's go back to S3 to just make sure that we know what we're talking about here. 
All right, internet super slow today on my side. I do apologize. All right, so let's get to S3. And let's open that bucket. And let's open permissions. And let's look at the bucket policy. So the bucket policy that I wrote for this bucket to make it public, we're just going to allow CloudFront to update that bucket policy with that new identity, right? So instead of having principal star here, we're going to see that this bucket is going to be updated with the only access with this identity. Well, actually, it will add access uh, to star. So I'll need to modify that later. But anyway, I can do a custom header, custom headers for my origin, right? So I can say um, specific server headers that I want. I, I can do a fixed value for those headers. A pattern path, uh, either use a default path or set up an origin path. And then, of course, what kind of policy am I going to give? Am I going to allow both HTTP or HTTPS? Am I going to redirect HTTP to HTTPS or run HTTPS only, right? So what I'm going to do is say, I'm going to redirect HTTP to HTTPS. That's what I want to do here. Um, allowed HTTP methods. You could do get head and options to also pull options uh, from any kind of headers or any kind of information from S3. But typically you just run get and head. That's it, right? That's, that's the uh, the two methods that you're going to use with HTTP get pulls your whole document head pulls, pulls the header of the document off. So, you know, uh, field level encryption, I do not going to use that. If I wanted to use field level encryption, I, I could. So what a field level encryption allows me to do is to decrypt data at HTTPS, uh, the decrypt HTTPS data at CloudFront. Sorry, it's a little early and I'm trying to, my mind is racing in one direction. I'm trying to do this training, do this delivery without having coffee. So, <laughs> you know, it is what it is. Um, with field level encryption, I can decrypt HTTPS at CloudFront and then encrypt just the fields uh, going forward to my to my uh, computer. So let's say I collect credit card uh, payments, right? I decrypt the whole HTTPS at the server and then I just encrypt the fields where the credit card payment information is uh, to send it to the server. So it's much more efficient on the inside because it doesn't need to use, you know, expensive, uh, uh, hard to decrypt encryption like SSL or, or TLS, right? Which is taxing on our CPU. So we can have CloudFront decrypt that and then just encrypt the, the little tiny pieces of data that do need to be encrypted. All right, um, cache based on selected head headers. You could set up, uh, uh, you could set up uh, uh, request headers uh, and set up a whitelist, set up uh, what kind of request headers you're going to cache. Uh, object caching, you can customize how you want to cache uh, your objects. I'm just going to use the default, right? And um, forwarding cookies, again, for a nestry bucket for static content, that won't make sense. Um, if you are doing any kind of cookie forwarding, if you are doing any kind of uh, writable backends, then that will be a configuration for you. Uh, query string, again, um, here it can remember some previous query strings and, and, and responses and serve straight out of CloudFront. That really helps speed up your process. Streaming, I'm not using streaming here because I'm not doing a streaming distribution. Uh, restrict viewer access to signed URLs. Well, no, I'm not doing that. I'm going to make it, make it publicly available, publicly available and compression. I can automatically compress, compress objects, uh, compression of objects, automatic compression of objects, uh, just uses the built in gzip compression, which gives you a pretty good compression. And of course, uh, helps you save a bit on uh, both the costs of CloudFront and also the speed of the delivery of your content, right? And then what I could do is associate the Lambda function and uh, set up uh, a, uh, a request in the Lambda function that will work together with uh, CloudFront to deliver some features of the site, right? Then I can say price class. Now price class is US, Canada, and Europe. That's the cheapest one. Uh, US, Canada, Europe, Asia, Middle East, and Africa. That's the middle sort of range. And then all edge locations includes uh, uh, for example, Australia and South America. If you're 
looking for best performance from all sites, you do best performance. Otherwise, if you're looking to save a few um, cents at the end of the month, then you can choose your region. I'm just going to use all edge locations here. Web application firewall, you can add, add a web application firewall, access control list, and this will give you additional layers of protection. But again, again, this is at an additional cost. So we're trying to do this for $0 as the uh, name of this uh, session implies. Uh, domain names, if you're doing a domain name. So for example, what I could do is like say demo.marcocloud.com, right? Um, demo.marcocloud.com would then mean, oh, okay. Um, if, if I go to demo.marcocloud.com, then I will reach this website, right? And what I could do is uh, I could set up just the default CloudFront certificate, which will give me star.cloudfront.net HTTPS. Or if I'm doing demo.marcocloud.com, I can do a custom SSL certificate, right? So what you can do is uh, you can choose an existing certificate. I have one. I have a star certificate for marcocloud.com. That's my domain. And I, I'll just use this certificate, but we will look at how to uh, how to use a certificate manager to request your own certificate. This certificate is an HTTPS certificate signed by amazon.com that is for free and will auto renew when you use CloudFront, when you use a load balancer or when you use an API gateway, right? And uh, um, support for clients, we're going to have to support just the SNI. SNI will be for free, right? Server name identification, pretty much indication, pretty much uh, is covered by any modern browser. <clears throat> if you have legacy clients, then it's $600 a month, right? Because it will have to dedicate an IP address for your SSL. We don't want to do that. We want to do SNI. Uh, security policy TLS 1.2.2018 is good. Uh, the lower, the lowest uh, TLS that it'll accept is 1.2, which is good enough. Uh, and of course, supported versions, um, HTTP2, right? Default root object, if I want to change the default root object logging, I'm going to keep it off because, uh, again, it's extra cost that I don't need, right? Um, enable IPv6, yeah, sure. I'm going to enable IPv6 so that even IPv6 clients will natively be able to connect to my website. And then, of course, a comment, and I'm going to say purpose equals demo, owner equals Marco, right? Again, I'm just going to add tags in the comments to know that what uh, to know what we're doing here. Uh, I'm just going to call it a little bit different. I'm going to call it Atria because I, I think I already have a demo uh, as a subdomain. All right, so let's copy that, right? And now we just do create distribution. That is as simple as it is. And now this will take a little bit of time. So be, uh, uh, while this uh, distribution is uh, being created, what we're going to do is we're going to go check out uh, Certificate Manager and Route 53. All right. So first thing we need to do is check out Certificate Manager. Okay, there we go. Certificate manager. I just I just type in ACM because that's the what I'm used to it being called the Amazon certificate manager um, or AWS certificate manager, right? Uh, so what I need to go do is I need to go to North Virginia uh, because certificate manager uh, that that is supported. In, um, in CloudFront needs to be created in North Virginia. That's just one sort of quirk of certificate manager. If you don't create your certificate in North Virginia, then it's not supported. And as I said, I got this marcocloud.com certificate, right? Uh, it's issued to me. It's also got uh, the subdomain star marcocloud.com. So this covers all the DNS records, right? You can always request a new certificate a public certificate. Uh, if you want to request a private one, you have to connect the CA. That's a whole different story. Uh, uh, public certificates, you click request, you specify what kind of domain. Let's say I want to do atriamarcocloud.com, right? I can add another C name like demo.atria.marcocloud.com, demo.marcocloud.com, right? Um, next, uh, I, I specify whether I want to email or DNS validate this domain. Now, I have to 
validate the domain somehow, right? And of course, uh, domain validation is, is key, right? Because um, oh, I need to make sure that, uh, they need to make sure that I own this domain, right? Again, tags, purpose, demo, and another uh, one, owner, Marco, right? And review. And that's how I would request a uh, DNS certificate. That is it, right? Um, it'll give me a file for CNAME validation, right? It'll say, uh, it'll give me a DNS file with the settings that I need to do. I would download that DNS file and I would put that into my uh, environment, into my DNS uh, at CNAME records, right? And uh, essentially, uh, that would validate and once I put it onto a CloudFront distribution, then it becomes eligible for renewal. Like for example, um, my other certificates are eligible for renewal because they are tied to a certain domain, right? So what I'm going to do with this one now is I'm just going to say delete because I don't want it. I got my star certificate, which is good enough. And of course, you don't want to delete delete any that are issued and that are in use and eligible, right? That's uh, uh, not a good idea. All right, so let's go back to our console and now we'll look at Route 53. Again, the Certificate Manager is a free service, right? You don't need to uh, build your own SSL certificates anymore, which is really cool. Uh, so Route 53, will help us uh, take a look at our domain uh, resolution, DNS. Now you can host on any DNS service. If you've registered your domain on your own personal uh, favorite DNS service, you can host it there, not a problem. With um, Route 53, what you get is you have 100% SLA and you've got uh, programmability. You can access this via the API and update your DNS records via API, uh, which is really cool. Right, so you would go to your domain and you would create a record set. So um, I'm just gonna create a record set and I'm gonna say Atria and I'm gonna say this is a um, this is an alias and my target is my uh, Atria Marco Cloud CloudFront distribution, right? So if I resolve atria.marcocloud.com, it will actually direct me to this CloudFront distribution and why do I know that this is the right target? Well, because I know that I call this distribution atria.marcocloud.com, right? And that is all I need to do, create a new record. Um, you have 200 records for free, 5 million requests, well, for free, in that 5 cents a month that uh, uh, hosting a domain on Route 53 costs. And as you see, you get four DNS servers distributed across the com, net, org, and doco.uk top level domains, and these are all hosted out of your CloudFront, uh, sorry, uh, out of the edge locations where CloudFront is also hosted, right? So that is a real, real big benefit of Route 53. All right, uh, now that I've done this, um, I need to go back to this bucket and I need to check out the policy. Uh, we said that the uh, CloudFront service can automatically update that policy Let's just see how this refreshes. Bucket policy. All right, so what we can see now is uh, CloudFront actually added another uh, statement identifier, another SID. Uh, now what we have is we have the same, the same statement, but this one only says principal is CloudFront origin access identity with this identity identifier, right? So what I can do now is I can kick out my previous statement that gave me uh, uh, that made that bucket public. I can click save, and now the bucket's not public anymore, right? And that is a really, really good way of doing things uh, because now I go to the bucket uh, DNS name and it's going to say that it's not available anymore. Well, 
it should say that oh no it's not going to say that because i made that uh i made that index html public all right so what i'm going to do is i'm going to now block public access this is what happens when you do live things <laughs> confirm when you do live when you do live uh, uh, deployments, right? You just gotta make sure this bucket policy is good. All right. And now it's forbidden. There we go. Now this is forbidden. So no S3 access from the public is allowed. Uh, I will need to go to my um, CloudFront distribution, right? So right now my distribution is deployed and enabled. So if I go look at this distribution, uh, what I should see is um, a CloudFront distribution name, right? And I can copy that and I can put that in. And what I will see is that this will redirect me to uh, an HTTPS website as soon as it gets a response. Um, access denied. That's not good. That shouldn't happen. It should have a response. It should have a response. Okay, so what we probably need to do here is, um, yeah, I'm, I'm fiddling with this bucket access, uh, blocking all public access, um, any public access policies. Nope. That should work. Okay, let's just save it. Save this one. It's just too early for me to figure out why it's actually blocking. Let's see if this is blocking still. No, it's not. Okay. Public settings updated successfully. Now let's look at the um, CloudFront distribution. Will the CloudFront distribution give me access? No, it won't. It doesn't allow access. All right. Interesting. All right, let's go to the, the C name of this one and see what the C name says. Atria.marketcloud.com. All right, I'm doing something wrong here. Access denied. Access denied. Uh, All right. Um, <laughs> Let's do some quick diagnostics, figure out what's wrong here. What is wrong here? Everything looks good. This is what you get when it's live, live demos, right? <laughs> some, oh yeah, I, I see what's wrong. The root object is incorrect. Okay, uh, default root object index HTML. Okay, I didn't see that one. Okay, now we are, we gotta edit it and we gotta wait for this CloudFront distribution to become enabled and configured. Uh, it's gonna say deployed in progress. Once it's deployed, we're gonna go back. Okay, so let's let's check out. Uh, how a CloudFront distribution, how a website on a CloudFront distribution should work. We're just going to use my domain while this uh, Atria is uh, becoming alive, right? And we're going to do a, a few tests. So first, it's going to be CDM Planet. It's going to be the performance checker from CDM Planet. We're going to see how the performance looks on uh, my website. There we go. Uh, let's run the performance check. Now, the first time that the, the, the website is accessed, there's going to be a performance hit because there's not, nothing in the cache. So it'll go to CloudFront. There will be nothing there. It'll go to S3. It'll pick up the data from S3 and then it'll cache it in the bucket, right? So first performance check. Um, let's see what happens. And uh, it's actually pretty good. 
it's actually pretty good. Um, so uh, DNS, uh, not bad, right? A little slow in Australia. Connect times, not bad. So uh, I can see a connect time in Hungary is one millisecond, even though my bucket's hosted up in Europe. So uh, that means that it's definitely connecting to CloudFront. Uh, Netherlands, CloudFront, uh, Vietnam, CloudFront, right? Uh, definitely, uh, these are CloudFront responses, right? Canada, Montreal, 13 milliseconds. Again, this is possible, uh, but what we're going to do is I'm just going to duplicate this tab so we can compare the results and we're going to run the performance checker again, right? Uh, just to see if there's anything that improves after and we're looking at improvements to time to first byte right we're looking at improvements to this column and we do see improvements to this column right previously we had 43 80 52 28 128 milliseconds now we got 34 22 2 25 42 milliseconds right so definite improvement on on everything here right on all time to first bytes because uh, this is delivered via cloudfront and this is just a, an S3 bucket, right? So if I look at um, my S3 management console uh, and I look at the overview of my, uh, actually, no, if I look at the buckets themselves, this is just uh, from one bucket. It will be great if this distribution comes up. CloudFront, let's refresh this thing. Let's refresh this thing. If it's enabled, it's not enabled yet. Well, we can, we can try. We can still try the distribution. No, I'm pulling it strings here, but you know, it is what it is. There we go. There we go. There's the distribution. There it is. Uh, and now if I enter uh, atria, marcocloud.com, right? If I enter this DNS name, again, uh, that should resolve to the same website. That resolves to the Hello World website. So now we can actually put this DNS name, instead of MarcoCloud, we'll, we'll put atria.marcocloud.com into our uh, performance check. Again, we're not, we're not expecting great performance out of the box, right? we are expecting better performance on the second time when we pull data. Okay, not great performance. As you can see, time to first, by first byte for Australia is 800 milliseconds. Time to first byte for Montreal is 74, Budapest is 412, uh, Netherlands is 3 352, Vietnam almost uh, over a second to first byte, right? All right, so let's repeat that on uh, this other tab that I ha have here so that we can see the difference in performance. Uh, ba -ba -ba, performance check, performance check. Let's see the performance check. All right, um, this hasn't improved much, so let's run one more. Uh, status 307, ah, because it's redirecting me to something. Again, all right, uh, it's redirecting me, but it's it's a tiny bit faster. The connects have down, gone down, the DNS has gone down to a millisecond in some locations. Uh, 307 means um, that I'm being redirected to another uh, location, so uh, why do why don't we do this one? Why don't we just do uh, yeah? That's uh, still um, yeah. I didn't configure something again. <laughs> I didn't configure something correctly at this CloudFront distribution. Again, live demos, right? <laughs> we love them. All right. Uh, this is correct. This is correct. Edge locations is correct. Deployed web. TLS is fine. Yeah, this is fine. This is fine. 
Anyway, what we can see is uh, we can check out the certificates, right? Um, actually, yeah. This is a. Uh, this is doing something weird. All right, we'll just work with what we have. We'll look at the Marco Cloud website instead of this new distribution that I didn't set up correctly for some reason. All right, uh, so let's look at the Marco Cloud domain. So that's my domain, and we saw how the CDN improved the performance. Now we're going to take a look at the actual SSL differences between these two domains. So if we go to my uh, 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 CloudFront distribution where, okay, let me make this visible so that you see the actual. So you can see that this is CloudFront.net, right? If I look at the certificate, <clears throat> it comes from CloudFront.net. But if I go to MarcoCloud.com, which is the other which is my actual domain, what you'll see is this is issued to marcocloud.com by Amazon, right? So HTTPS works. If I try to go to HTTP specifically, it will say, nope, I'm redirecting you, right? And it's giving me the right certificate. And again, these certificates are free. If you want, you can go with the default CloudFront certificate, but if you want your domain, then of course, you are going to need a, a DNS. You, you can host this off of cloudfront.net, right? If you're happy with this domain name, uh, for your domain name, this is completely free, right? Okay, um, what do we need to take a look at? Now we need to take a look at uh, security, right? So we said we wanna also have a secure website. Uh, so let's look at website security. Right, we're gonna scan a website uh, with what should we scan it? Um, web uh, web performance. Um, bu -bu -bu get met GT metrics. Okay, yeah, let's let's use this one. This one's great for for testing your whole website, right? And we wanna. Uh, we want to test this one first, right? That, that we set up. It's going to ask for HTTP. Uh, estimated wait is 50 seconds. Well, wow. A lot of people doing the same thing that I'm doing right now. Uh, we're just going to do the same thing here on the Marco Cloud domain. Just going to put it up into the queue. And we're just going to wait for this to complete. Now what I have for that website is I also have, okay, let's go back. For this website, what I also have is I have a, a nice little feature. Uh, I have a li nice little feature in this, uh, in this distribution. Oops, see, not, not that. Behaviors, that's where we want to be. Not only does it redirect to HTTPS, but it actually calls up a Lambda function. Uh, that's not the right bucket. It's not the right distribution. All right, let me go to the right distribution. Okay, so I wanna go to my Marco Cloud distribution and I wanna go to behaviors so that I can show you the Lambda function, right? Um, not only does it redirect to HTTPS, it also has a Lambda function that actually delivers, you can see this Lambda function here, uh, HTTP security headers Lambda at edge one, right? All right, so let's find this Lambda function uh, and see what this Lambda function does. We'll go to Lambda. We're going a little over our allotted time, but hopefully this is useful stuff so you can see something cool here. Uh, Okay, Lambda functions. We're gonna go to North Virginia. And we're gonna see the Lambda function that is configured 
There we go. HTTP security headers, Lambda Edge, right? So it's just a Node.js Lambda function. It's very small, half a kilobyte in size, right? And um, in the function code itself, what it does is it just says, when I get a request, I'm going to respond with these headers, right? And this is strict transport security header. Maximum age is uh, this include subdomains preload, right? Content security policy, and it just re returns the content security policy, right? Uh, options for content just re returns the options. Uh, frame options deny. Uh, 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 cross site scripting protection is is on block, and refer policy must be the same as the origin, right? And it adds these headers to the CloudFront uh, distribution. So that just gives me that higher level of security, that, that just a few uh, uh, level layers of security. And as we saw, a million Lambda function invocations are completely free. So for example, if you want to, uh, if you want to see the uh, distribution uh, respond with these headers, you can just add a Lambda function and add any distribution. JJ, you are not the only person seeing lagging. It is lagging horribly today. I, as I said, we had a storm, a huge, huge storm overnight, and the internet is going uh, like it's it's on my side is like a snail. I do apologize. There's huge, 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 huge lagging on this side. I do apologize for that. All right, um, let's see the performance of our Atria. Um, uh, 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 the Atria uh, uh, website, right? Um, so now I, I see it's it's pretty good. It's pretty fast, right? Um, we'll see that uh, there are uh, there's a page red re redirect, right? So that's bad. So that's something that that I somehow configured misconfigured on that one. But what what I want to look at is I want to look at uh, MarcoCloud.com, right? Um, it's got a pretty good pretty good rating. A rating score of 98% for uh, page speed, 97 at Y slow. Fully loaded time was two and a half seconds for my whole page, and the whole page is uh, half a megabyte, right? 69 requests in that page. So if we look at the number of requests for my page, so how many users can I get for free on this site, right? Um, 69 requests. I can divide uh, 2 million free requests on CloudFront right? 2 million free requests by 69. Uh, so that gives me 28,000 uh, requests, right? So for my website, uh, because I have so many requests in the page, uh, that will give me what? About 1,000 users a day, right? 1,000 users a day across the month, I can support for $0, right? Uh, I've got uh, four, uh, half a megabyte, so 0.5 megabytes, um, actually 50 gigabytes uh, times 1024, that's megabytes, divided by 0.5, how many visitors? 100,000 uh, um, requests for my page. So, of course, the way you structure your page, right, is gonna be dependent on how many users you can have. And for example, if we look at this page, the other page, it's four requests, it's uh, 1.5 kilobytes, so the, the 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 more the cleaner your structure is for your page, uh, the best the better the more users you'll be able to support, right? On average, if you set up a page to be very clean with about thirty requests, right? So if you have two million requests for free, thirty requests per page, that gives you sixty six thousand um, requests per month, right? So that gives you literally. Um, uh, over 2000 users per day. If you go down and really optimize it, right? And go down to uh, 10 requests per page, right? Uh, that will give you 200,000 uh, requests across the board. So that gives you in the range of 5,000 users. Uh, as I said, yeah, I mean, you can lead up to 10,000 users into your website for free every month, right? With the AWS free tier. Uh, you can do 1 million Lambda requests, which is good for 5,000 users a day, right? So uh, 
really, really good options. And what I want to say is um, thank you very much. I do apologize for the internet being super slow. I wasn't expecting it uh, to be this bad this morning, but it is what it is, right? I can't really swap my provider out uh, on a whim if there's a huge storm. Uh, so yeah, I'm gonna say um, I'm gonna take some questions if anybody has any questions at this point. All right, if there are no questions, then I'm gonna say thank you very much. It was my pleasure to. Uh, present this to you i do apologize for a few quirks that there were th that, that we had um you know that's what you get with live training not everything works uh <laughs> on the first try um yeah you're gonna have to fiddle around a bit with uh how to set up your uh, site uh, you saw that within about 20 minutes we had our CloudFront distribution, we had our site up and we had everything up. So super easy to build. Uh, we'll support, you know, possibly a few thousand users uh, per day, which is really cool. And of course, um, is really, really easy to set up and, and free, right? All right. Um, Avinash says a question. Can we host dynamic website in S3? No, um, S3 doesn't do any server-side processing. S3 does uh, static content delivery, right? So uh, when you deliver static content, uh, you're not expecting the server to do anything. If you need processing, what you can do is you can add server-side script, uh, uh, client-side scripting, and client-side scripting can uh, help you do that. Uh, Mandar has a question, how to deploy code on a Windows instance using CloudFormation? Um, yeah, that is a discussion for a completely different time. Uh, <laughs> uh, dif different time, very, very much different time. Uh, all right, uh, you are welcome, everybody. Uh, yeah, I do apologize about the speed. That's That's just, you know, it is what it is. I live in Canada, man. We've got... ADSL here in a lot of houses. If you wouldn't, you wouldn't believe that, right? That's that's how it is. Canada is like a third world country when it comes to internet. Uh, everywhere across the globe that I've went, I've got faster internet than, than in my country. Uh, all right. Um, question: uh, Is AWS similar to GCP? Yes. Um, AWS was basically the first cloud provider uh, of massive scale infrastructure and the GCP and Azure basically are following in AWS steps. Uh, you have the ability to programmatically address the whole infrastructure. You have the ability to do it through the management console, just like how I showed you in this session. Uh, so Mithin, yeah, uh, it is very, very similar in that respect. Uh, they do also offer very similar options and very similar performing platforms um, and and they're both massive scale so uh, here I mean you know a simple website will cost you nothing and then you you can scale and of course when you scale with your users when you get to tens of thousands of users per day you're expecting to have a bit of uh, you know earnings from that website right if, if nothing else put a couple of banners on your F website and it'll make you way more money than you'll be spending on CloudFront on S3 and all other services. All right. Um, yeah, thank you very much. I'm going to end the session and I will hopefully see you in another future session when we have a little bit faster internet and a little bit less lag. I have recorded this session. So uh, if you want to uh, see the session, make sure to check out my YouTube channel. So my YouTube channel is Marco Cloud. Uh, please consider subscribing if you find this contrast content interesting. I have a lot of other content on cloud computing, on AWS. I'm going to be doing GCP content in the future. Uh, I have a lot of few, uh, a lot of suggestions on, on jobs, the workforce, uh, everything about cloud and some things not about cloud. Like, for example, I filmed that storm yesterday. Uh, uh, and you can see how that storm worked out and slowed down my internet here. 
Uh, Mithin, uh, do you get free credit from AWS? GCP provides $300 free credit. Well, actually you get the free tier. So uh, basically what you wanna go to is you wanna go to the Amazon free tier. You get all of these services for free for a year. It's a little bit more complicated. So for example, uh, you get 1 million free Lambda requests, right? Uh, you get uh, 750 hours of one EC2 ins of an EC2 instance, right? Every month, 750 hours of a free database, and that's for 12 months. So not only are you getting the $300 that you get with GCP, you actually get uh, that free service uh, for the first 12 months um, with with essentially uh, with essentially uh, that amount taken off your 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 account, right? Uh, and, and this could be like, uh, if you are getting to, for example, um, 1 million Lambda connections, uh, that's that's a couple of dollars, right? So that's, um, well, it's not even a couple of dollars. It's uh, it's about 50 cents. Uh, if you look at, at, at CloudFront, right? So CloudFront, if you were pushing it, right? If you were really pushing the 50 gigs on CloudFront and 2 million requests on CloudFront, and if you got to that exact point, that's about $5 worth per month, right? Um, uh, uh, on CloudFront itself, right? So you do get a lot of free stuff, like 25 gigabytes of DynamoDB, that's always free, right? DynamoDB tables, always free, 25 gigabytes of, of data, right, in that table. Uh, what else? Um, yeah, as I said, um, compute, always free, right? One million requests for Lambda. Uh, what else? SNS, one million messages for free. Uh, then... Let's just filter like this, always free. All right. Always free. DynamoDB, Lambda, um, Lambda's function processing, right? Uh, SNS is uh, uh, notifications, messages, email and text message notifications. CloudWatch, uh, you get custom, 10 custom metrics, but otherwise a lot of metrics are free. Um, Cognito, 50,000 users per month authenticating for free, right? Zero cost. Um, Chime, we won't use Glacier, 10 gigabytes of storage for, for archives for free for all, always. What else? Uh, uh, 62 emails, 62,000 emails, 1 million messages in your message queue, uh, uh, 10,000 activities in your workflows, uh, 100 build minutes if you're doing coding, code commit, f 5 active users for free per month for a code commit. Code pipeline, one active code pipeline. So if you're developing an application, code commit is like Git. It's highly available. You got 50 gigabytes of free storage on that. You got five active users and up to 10,000 Git requests per month for free, right? Uh, and you can build a free CI CD pipeline. Maybe that's going to be my next training, a free CI CD pipeline. Uh, what else? Um, database migration service. 750 hours of migrations for free. Glue, 1 million uh, objects in Glue catalog for free. Uh, key management service, 20,000 free requests on a key management service, right? So great stuff. All right, what was, uh, there was another question. Is AWS free? Uh, some of it. <laughs> All right, um, what else? Uh, how about Microsoft's aggressive recent cloud growth against Amazon? Yes, it has been growing aggressively, but you also saw that already in December, they started locking down free tier in, in AWS. They started uh, locking down accounts to what they can do with those free $300 or whatever you get from Microsoft. And you saw that when, uh, when the actual uh, uh, proverbial uh, uh, issues happened with, with coronavirus, uh, then uh, they sort of disabled free services completely. And that looks bad for all cloud services, right? Um, I will essentially be saying by, by not having cloud service that can expand to infinity, Microsoft has thrown a bad light on all cloud, cloud services and has made a disservice against all uh, cloud services. And that's what I have against them that they cannot scale because they made their data centers too small because of the design features. But that will take offline and we can have a discussion about that on LinkedIn. Uh, again, you can subscribe to my uh, YouTube channel here. You can, uh, of course, please connect with me on LinkedIn. 
uh, LinkedIn is here and you'll see more videos on my YouTube channel. If you're, uh, if you're a Twitter user, then uh, Twitter, uh, my Twitter account is right here. And of course, if you are, uh, if you use Twitch, Twitch TV, my uh, website on Twitch is right here. And you can uh, connect with me in, in, on all of those. And if you want to discuss things like that, uh, JJ, how aggressive MS uh, uh, fits uh, against the cloud growth against Amazon. I think that there's a market for everybody. I think that everybody has to do a good job. That's all. All right. Uh, feedback form. Where's the feedback form, Pramod? Come on, Pramod. Get the people the, their feedback forms. Everybody's waiting on you. All right, you can see me a little bigger now. Uh, all right. That is it. Email ID. Moin, what do you mean with email ID? Do you want you want to send me an email? Sure. Marco at marcocloud.com. There you go. You're always welcome to email me directly. Thank you very much, everybody. Uh, I'm going to sign off now. Bye.